News in the world of Aska. Let's go. So we got our first major update in Aska, and it has some good stuff. One of the big ones that I and lots of people have been looking forward to is the custom world settings. And they're giving us quite a few options that we can control, more than just turning off and on invasions. First of all, when you're starting the game, you'll be able to opt between creating a normal or a custom game world when starting a new game. Let's look at the specific custom game mode controls. Landscape height, landscape aspect, invasion difficulty, monster biome frequency, monster population per biome, structure decay rate, that's a nice one, starting season, year length, day length, and how often villagers arrive, climate, animals biome frequency, like deer smoker, wolves and bears. You know, in survival games, people are really getting now to where they wanna be able to customize their experience. And I'm glad that Aska went ahead and added these type of options in early on in major update number one, because if they hadn't, people would just continue screaming that they need it. So I think that was really smart of them to give it to people like practically right out the gate. There's definitely gonna be some things that I'm gonna be adjusting in my gameplay. But something interesting is that it kind of sounds like you can only do this when starting a new game. Can you not adjust a world that you already have? Let me check this real quick. So if I go into a current game, so here I am in a current game, hit escape, look at settings, gameplay settings, don't show all the new options for changing your current world and having it become kind of a different mode. That's unfortunate. So for the game mode selection and controls, you'll have to do that when you create the world. No backsies on worlds you have already started. They have quite a few new features and buildings. A very interesting and fun idea is the way they're doing a new outhouse. Characters will now be able to support your farming efforts by using the new outhouse. And yes, actually using it. During their leisure time, villagers will visit the outhouse and produce compost. Players will be able to do the same. Limited by a buff that prevents overusing the outhouse, villagers will also dispose of spoiled food and compost at the outhouse. Hopefully they close the door while they're in there. Just saying. <laughs> but that is nice. We did have uh no wonderful way of dealing with spoiled food and wanting to get more for farming sometimes so i think this will be very useful functional one could say beauty pet the beauty pet allows players to change their character's appearance whenever they like it's a tier two building requires carpentry materials to make so you can change your look for whatever reason you want there's a new metal part collector. This structure acts as a recycling bin for metal parts. Villagers will automatically drop their broken metal parts and workshop workers will prioritize reusing them over foraging new metal parts. This is a really good idea because wasting metal is no joke in Aska. You got to work for that stuff. New resource compost we already talked about. There's an improved wall building system. It adds different variants for different types of angles so that now when you're placing a wall, it'll automatically select the correct wall angle based on the terrain where you're trying to place it. There's also a new add-on of spiked walls. We've been waiting for this one. Walls can receive a spiked barricade add-on that damages attacking enemies, so that's good. And then also multiplayer and network traffic optimization. We have some AI improvements. These pretty much have to do with people not getting stuck in places that they're not supposed to or sleeping under their beds, that kind of thing. Invasion improvements. Random invasions like the Blood Moon Wolves will now scale with the villager count and the amount of time played. I think this is a really good idea, particularly if it works for bear attacks, because when you get the bear attacks early on and you're not able to defend yourself, your entire civilization could be wiped out. And then they do indeed have a very long list of improvements and fixes. Let's hit the highlights that I think are gonna be more significant to most people. You can now sort people in the assign menu, which is super useful. So if I go and look at a particular workstation 
and I'm gonna look at who I want to assign. Instead of just having to scroll through the whole list, I can come up here and I can say, I wanna look at people alphabetically, or I can look at them according to their proficiency. And so that's gonna help me find the people that I wanna assign to that faster. But I need to look a bit closer here and figure out what is the sorting logic for it? Because they're sorted according to proficiency now, but according to which proficiency? I can't tell at first glance why it put them in this particular order. It doesn't seem to be the highest proficiency for the building that I clicked on because this is a workshop. I would think crafting skills would be high. That'll need some investigation. Hoeing in caves no longer teleport you above ground. Fix a stone golem boss not fighting after regenerating in stage two. Fixed archers not finding arrows but grabbing two bows instead. Handy. Increased max search range for villagers to 300. That's nice that they can search a larger area. Added white lists to all workstations that have storage. So if I come and look at this workshop, there's this new little box here that says whitelist villagers that can access this storage. By default, anybody can access the storage in this workshop. If I want only the people working here to access that storage, then I could limit it to them, I suppose. That could be handy to keep people from stealing things. Improved cart interactions and cart storage can be accessed from structure menu. But what I really want to know is if we can now open a gate while we have the cart. Let's see. Can I? Nope. Still can't. That one's still on the wish list. The stone Jotun spells can now damage structures. Villagers no longer wave if they are in a hurry. Thank goodness, because that just was silly. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with silly, but they should be in a hurry. Pets get more food from uncooked items and no longer scale with durability. I'm not sure what that no longer scale with durability means. Kennel workers always stay up to feed the starving dogs. That's nice. You got to keep an eye on them sometimes. So hopefully they'll be better at their job. I have had them let a dog starve to death before. Dog perks are stronger and give more health. That's good because I've kind of been leery to take my dogs out with me. I'm very protective of them. Woodcutters no longer break carpentry items for firewood. Hallelujah. That's frustrating when they did that. Do a lot of work to make these. I don't want them chopped up for firewood. Lower tier resources are prioritized for decomposition by harvesting. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Maybe it means if there's a bunch of stuff laying around and part of it's about to go bad, they'll pick up the stuff that's about to go bad first so that it gets renewed in storage. Added feathers, bones, junk, and bait to settlement resources tab page. Fixed cooks no longer being able to do skinning. Fixed bear invasion scaling with difficulty. Hopefully that means that they have it balanced out like they did the other ones. So the bear isn't wiping out all the newbie villages. Fix very high enemy counts on Viking invasion difficulty due to a configuration mistake. Fix players not being able to rebuild walls anymore after they were destroyed. Fixed invasion still occurring if the even if the difficulty was set to none. Fix Jotun blood not spawning in biomes. They added a toggle for sprint setting and crouch setting. Added an option to show all structures ranges on the map at the same time. So if I go to the map under edit filters, no, nope, right over here, there's a toggle, show ranges. Oh, let me zoom out. I mean, that is handy. You can really see where different things overlap and where you have holes in your coverage. And change map icons to show a green eye when they are visible on the compass instead of a red eye when they are not visible. That makes much more sense. I think there's a lot of good things here in this update. Definitely a lot of things that they've added on. And I'm sure that they will continue adding more things as we go. Did you get what you wanted? What is it that you still want? I gotta say, off the top of my head, one of the things I still want is to be able to open gates when I am pulling a cart. Please don't make me put it down every time. And yeah, I guess I need to uh, start a new game to look at some of these world modifiers. Leave a like and subscribe for more Aska. Until next time, happy gaming.